Sebastian Mark Page. I'm a core developer on the React team. Very cool, awesome. How did you become a part of the React core team? Well, I started at Facebook when Jordan was kind of experimenting with Jordan Walk, inventor of React, and he was experimenting with this thing. It wasn't even called React yet, it was called something else. I forget what it's called. I was actually building data visualization frameworks at the time, and I was looking at a lot of different solutions, and I was really ex excited about D3 and a lot of these functional paradigms. But then I figured I would look into the React and see what that was about. So and I ended up using that for data visualization and building React Art, which then became a, a sort of a core platform for how we do vector graphics. And then that's how I started contributing to React. And then soon after that, I just joined the core team. Nice. Very exciting things happening with Fiber. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? How it came about is pretty interesting because we had a lot of different experiments at Facebook where actually a lot of the inspiration for me came from Component Kit, which is our iOS React-like framework. But it's driven by multiple threads and an SDM kind of model, software transactional memory. And it didn't have all the features of React but it had the features that we needed to power Newsfeed. So that's actually how we build Newsfeed for Facebook. But how do we bring that to JavaScript that is single-threaded, plus we need all these other features for like memoization that powers React. So Jordan built a prototype in Reason that then became the Reason language. And then um, I kind of tweaked some of, it, of those ideas and bring, brought it back to the JavaScript land and we built Fiber as an incremental upgrade path to where we want to be. What are some of the more exciting features coming to React Fiber this year? The best functionality is basically everything is async. So now you have full control over scheduling, which is the core feature. And it's pretty simple, actually. I think we have a good API where you can define that a particular state update is associated with a high priority update, like user interactions, or a low priority update, like network coming back from as a response, or even higher, like animation. Um, then we also have the ability to automatically have uh, low priority updates be that are hidden, be even lower priority than that. So they're only computed if you really need them. Does this affect um, external libraries like RxJS? It might, um, most of the time, if you're using the existing life cycles, like component did mount, component did update, it probably shouldn't matter that much. You might see that overusing those things can have a negative effect on it. RxJS is actually uh, promoting a lot of immutability, which we are too, and that helps in this model. The problem you can see that if you use a lot of mutability is that we can't go back in time. Um, and we need to be able to go back in time. If we start working on something, and then we say we want to have a higher priority update. That higher priority update needs to be able to utilize the state that we had before to compute its new state rather than what we started on. Um, so immutability actually helps a lot in this. The React community is so big. Um, did you guys spend time actually curating in the community, or did it feel like it just popped out of nowhere? Yeah, I, I wouldn't say it popped out of nowhere. Like it, it took. But it took a while. Uh, React wasn't immediately adopted as something that people liked. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, we got a lot of criticism early on that it was stupid and <laughs> there was no reason for this. Um, but then after a while, as people kind of saw what was behind it, and I think we learned our lesson there that describing the algorithm and, and making pe really people understand how it works is, is important. Um, but also curing the rating, the ecosystem is important. One of the things that we value a lot is not having um, breaking changes too much or making it easy to have an upgrade path. So a lot of what we do is actually take that burden upon ourselves in the team. So most of our day-to-day our, our -day job is actually to upgrade Facebook. Um, and as we're doing that, we're seeing patterns and things that are problematic. Um, and we kind of learn the lessons that we had to go through and we bring those to the community so we can explain them how to upgrade them. Because if you don't build an ecosystem around what you're building, then you're just going to build a small thing and you can't build anything on top. 
technology is all about building things on top of layers after layers after layers. And that breaks down if you can't unify. There are a lot of projects in the React community, like React VR, React Hardware. Did these actually start from Facebook or somewhere else? Not all of them. There, there's a lot of different versions. What about React VR? React VR did. Okay. Um, so that's something we haven't, we have kind of launched an alpha preview. It isn't fully out yet, um, but hopefully it's pretty soon it will be. Mm -hmm. And that's built um, for our Oculus platform, mm -hmm. uh, but also cross-platform because everyone in the VR space really realizes that it's not about the platform games, it's about everyone building for VR because it's a new platform, we have to build excitement and everyone has to have content for it. So there's actually a lot more interest in web VR uh, than native platforms right now, which is really exciting, I think. Interesting. I really like the fact that the React VR project actually came out of Facebook because it seems a little bit more official than just a random community project that pops out of nowhere. Yeah, and we're actually using it to build products ourselves, which yeah. is the, the key to making that happen. Yeah, that's really exciting. Are there any things, um, as you're building React VR, are, any, are there any learnings that are sort of going into React Fiber or any other projects? We always consider that, but it turns out there's a lot of the, the same uh, rules apply mm -hmm. in any kind of platform. It's pretty basic that um, UI engineering needs to have the same scheduling primitives regardless of which platform. Mm -hmm. So we're not actually special casing React VR that much. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, React VR itself just runs on the React Native platform. Okay, okay. It's cool. So it's, it's almost like there's not that much magic, but that's the beautiful part right. about developing with it. Okay, I like that. So I know you're excited about WebAssembly. Can you tell us a little bit more about what is exciting you? Yeah, WebAssembly is pretty exciting. It's, it's going to unlock. There, there's a lot of optimism, but I think some of the optimism is, is, might be a little too over-optimistic because you think that you will take your existing native platform and just port it to the web. And what most people don't realize is that there are different constraints on the web, like file size. They're not just standards being slow that makes those constraints. It's also about being able to download it immediately and quickly and, and, and have a distribution channel that is uh, fast. Um, so what happens if you port your existing native stacks is that you end up shipping a lot too much. Um, so I think that there will be a trend toward on native stacks to minimizing their dependencies. It's kind of what we've been seeing with JavaScript lately, right? Like everyone tries to cut down on the dependency graph a lot. And we'll see the same in the native land because it's an even, even worse situation. Well, you guys have a lot of plans for the next few years, but is there anything else that's exciting and magical that we're about to see in the React community? <laughs> So one thing that I'm really excited about lately is the fact that browsers have started to modularize. Chrome has this interesting project going on where everything in the browser stack is being decoupled. So it can be used, for, part of it can be used for native stacks as well. And I think that's really interesting because it, it kind of makes that so that you can tell native engineers that here's a piece of the web that's actually really good and you might want to try it out in your native stack and then get collaboration and building on top of all these things instead of bifurcating the ecosystem. Yeah. Really exciting. Cool. Where can we find you on the internet? Mostly on Twitter. Seb Mark Page. Cool. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Hey there. Are you into reactive programming using JavaScript? Do you have to deal with asynchrony in your web app? Then join this dot instructor Ben Lesh to learn all of the ins and outs of RxJS in his hands-on workshop. Available online and in person, Go to rxworkshop.com for more details and to book your spot today.